Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for your interest. Wow, pretty crowded. Um, this is Kim Jill. I'm Andre Klapper. Uh, we are 50% of the engineering community team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, the talk is called Wikimedia Adopts Fabricator uh, Deprecates Seven Infrastructure Tools. So uh, this is basically what we've been working on for the last maybe nine or 12 months. Um, I, I looked at the talk description again and I realized there's a few aspects that you might be interested in. Um, there's, there's a part that's the social process, the decision making, um, there's the migration process itself, um, and the functionality of this tool that we're using now, Fabricator itself. Um, so you might be here for different reasons. I tried to cover everything a bit, and you might all be disappointed in the end because it wasn't uh, in depth enough. <laughs> um, so first of all, uh, Wikimedia. It's a project and community behind uh, Wikipedia, Commons, and a few other ones. There's volunteers, uh, there's staff of the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, we too are staff. Uh, development engineering teams, um, they all have the different needs, workflows, tools, or head. <laughs> Depends. Uh, of course, also projects like core, extensions. Um, so what I want to say is there's quite some diversity in teams and attitudes and workflows and tools. But I think we can say that uh, free and open source software uh, and free knowledge are kind of like shared core values. So to, to explain where we were about one year ago, um, the main tool was a uh, Bugzilla instance. You see a bug report here with lots of interesting uh, UI fields. It's just the top. Who has, who has used Bugzilla before? Hands up. OK. <laughs> I see. Um, next one is RT. Hands up. <laughs> okay, RT was mostly used by, by uh, the operations team uh, in Wikimedia Foundation. Um, this is Mingle. Mingle? Not very popular, I see. Well, at least a few. <laughs> one person is even from Wikimedia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, okay, Wikimedia okay. stuff. Um, so, you, so you see the card view here. It, it's, it, this is not a task uh, or a ticket like the two previous ones. Uh, this is a function that, uh, for example, Baxilla doesn't have. And you see the columns, and you can move the cards. And um, we also had a, I think this is Trello. Yeah, a Trello instance. Trello, anyone? Trello. Well, that's more popular. OK, cool. <laughs> and for code review, we still have uh, a Garrett instance. Also, quite a lot, OK. And uh, we have and had all these tools. And uh, in between these tools, we had some interactions. For example, a hook to create uh, comments from Garrett in Baxilla tickets. Um, and as some of our teams uh, like to use Mingle and Trello for the project management, uh, we also had self-written custom scripts like called Bingle and Bugello to sync a bit between Baxilla and Mingle and Baxilla and Trello and all these funny things. You, you might see the problems with the setup. Um, collaboration between staff and volunteers um, and also in between teams. Um, Communication, openness, transparency, accountability. Um, for some stuff, you needed a login even, like, like Mingle or Trello was harder to reach. RT, some people said it was a black hole. Um, duplication, divide. We had to maintain these scripts. Uh, things broke sometimes. For example, once we upgraded Bugzilla, then uh, the Garrett notifications didn't work anymore for version 4.4.5 or something. Um, Programming languages, MediaWiki, the, the, the main thing is PHP, but um, that was Perl and Java, and uh, we weren't, it wasn't that easy for, for people in the community to even do what they want. Uh, then onboarding new contributors, the learning curve is pretty steep the more tools you have, and people nowadays are a bit used to GitHub. Um, yeah, and Paxilla simply isn't for project management. So everything all together slowed us down. 
So the idea was to find something better, or uh, at least discuss if we can find something better with uh, clearly developers as the main audience, uh, and not, for example, uh, editors or, or readers of Wikipedia or something. Um, the, the problem, as usual, with <laughs> these things is, if you want to come up with a new standard uh, in your community, you might end up with just one more tool. So that was something we wanted to avoid. Um, so what we did uh, in, I think, around May, March or April last year was we invited teams and developers to describe their needs uh, on the page. That was, that was December, January. That was December, January? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, so, so we asked a few simple questions. Uh, we had 24 replies. Um, uh, but by the way, um, all the stuff you see here is, of course, on MediaWiki.org, so uh, you can look it up. Oh, I will just add, so 24 more replies, but from 24 types of profile. Don't you think that, you know, we have more than 500 people, but really, like, we, we, we went in, into depth into different roles in the community, in our organization, etc. cetera. Um, so, so we collected these, uh, that feedback, uh, then uh, we consolidated it into must versus would like to do this or that in, in the tool I'm using for my project. Split that into several categories. So, so we, we get a basic idea, basically. What, what are the needs? What, what do the people want? And um, then we asked people to propose tools that could be options because developers and, in general, people have opinions. So um, normally they also have ideas uh, which projects they like. And, and I have to speak like this. In yeah, this I'm sorry. Minutes. We only have one microphone. We, we are really good colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, and we did that because uh, as if, you, if you enter into a discussion like this in your community, probably the first thing you will get is, oh, I like this tool. I like this tool. I and you're discussing basically your preferred tools, and you're not discussing what you really need to discuss, which is what you want to do, what's the current problem, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the reason for the survey. Um, and after that, yeah, we, we had several tool options at the beginning. Um, we encouraged people to discuss, to investigate uh, the functionality too. And then we were after de decreasing the proposals, the items in that list uh, that we considered. Uh, we encouraged people to set up test instances. We have Wikimedia Labs uh, where we can run or install any kind of uh, stuff. <laughs> um, and, and the feedback quickly turned into this one question like, shall we move to Fabricator? We, we had looked at seven or eight other tools, sometimes also combinations. Uh, shall we only use that part or shall we use this part together with that from, from some applications? But really within, within two or three weeks, I guess, it, it was like Fabricator seems to be best fit for the needs. Um, and then to gather broader community support and opinion, because, yeah, we just had a few dozens of people discussing this. Uh, we had a three-week request for comments, uh, which is also a Wikimedia-specific thing where we asked the community, put up banners on pages, communicating widely, basically. And that RFC after three weeks, uh, it seemed that there was a general support for moving um, from our infrastructure tools um, to Fabricator. So, there was, as I said, there was also another proposal, a proposal, just use a part of Fabricator and keep some other stuff, but generally everything. So, and Fabricator is, according to Wikipedia, if you can trust that, a uh, suite of uh, web-based software development collaboration tools, um, originally internally at Facebook. It's in PHP and it's under Apache uh, 2. And uh, I'll have more screenshots in there. Uh, and if, if you can't wait, uh, fabricator.wikimedia.org. But uh, it's, it's a software forge, so it has several applications well integrated into each other. Uh, and you see there's, there's a few core applications, for example, for, for uh, tasks and bug reports. There's something called Manifest. Um, you, have, you have code review, uh, notifications. Uh, at some point, uh, continuous integration. Uh, yeah, stuff. <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's well integrated, so uh, it, it l things link to each other. 
Um, so as we had this RFC, uh, let's move to Fabricator, uh, how to approach that. Um, we created a team, basically. It, it was cross-team, but you, you needed, you needed uh, some expertise from some areas. So um, from, from the release engineering uh, core team, we have somebody with uh, PHP skills, and, and he also uh, had maintained a Fabricator instance before. Uh, lower level stuff, operations, um, the migration script itself, somebody had to write it, there was nothing. Um, so that was also done by uh, Chase, who's, who's in operations. Uh, communication wide, uh, in lots of places, with, with lots of stakeholders, with the community, for example, with, with the upstream uh, project, because, hey, we're interested and we'll probably come up with some needs. Um, yeah, the, the bug management aspect itself, and um, trying to find all these other small bits that might fall through the cracks, um, because you probably always forget something, because nobody has done something like that before with, with that size, and there was no migration script anyway. And of course, um, product management, release management, that, that you have contact partners there, um, that you can discuss the needs. Um, and what, what I consider is especially important, the relationship with upstream. Um, you must understand their model, their attitudes, uh, discuss what's feasible. And f for Fabricator upstream, I, I really have to say, um, they're really clear on priorities. They're, they answer unbelievably quickly, but they, the answer might not what you want to be, uh, what you want to hear. Uh, we're pretty clear with one fix. This is not in our plans. Uh, our priorities, priorities currently are different. If you want to challenge them, you need really good arguments. Um, but if you want to uh, hack this up yourself, custom, here's the explanation and really well technically written the eight or nine things you need to consider. So upstream is very clear in priorities and very helpful and very responsive. Some, something amazing about upstream is that you see Fabricator and all they have, and this is basically three maintainers. And it's amazing, I just have to say, it's, uh, you, have to, you have to see to believe. And three maintainers that they develop all that stuff, but they also give you a great support. So even when they tell you no, they tell you no in a way and with an explanation, I say, well, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so uh, it was an amazing, it's an amazing experience to work with them. Um, so the basic steps we performed was, um, we, we had this test instance, instance still, um, but uh, our first aim was uh, set up the production instance. Uh, then also, uh, yeah, after this number one, uh, use that production instance itself for planning. It's like dog fooding. Um, but that also means that you already create tickets in there, and these tickets have a number. Um, so uh, then uh, we set up another test instance with uh, Bugzilla data migrated so people could see like what does this script do, how uh, would it look like, what is all the data you dropped. Uh, you can have wonderful bike shed discussions about this, like uh, which priority values do we want. Uh, so you also need to manage that part somehow. Uh, and then the actual migration of the Bugzilla data. Uh, we did that in late November over four or five days. And uh, we also migrated RT in December, but that was not too complicated. That just took eight hours or something. Um, and way less bugs. Uh, only one thing we didn't think about before <laughs> with RT. With Bugzilla, we had a few more things that we didn't expect it. Um, we identified a task for each of these steps. Uh, you have this list. Uh, we have a list on Wiki for, for the migration itself, uh, step by step, who's doing what. But uh, we also had this in Fabricator, of course, because we've been using that tool uh, for planning this, actually. And uh, communicating, we asked uh, weeks before we migrated uh, Baxilla, our users, please, please register already in Fabricator, um, because we somehow needed to link uh, the accounts and the data. So um, we can still do this with people who, who haven't uh, uh, registered yet, but the more uh, we could already handle in these four or five days of, of users, the better. Um, yeah, this, this is pretty close to how, how Fabricator looks. I mean, this is a test instance, so some colors are different and, and some, some decisions how, how to tag uh, things we've changed in the meantime, and the UI might have changed a very little bit. But um, this was the test instance we, we set up. We asked the community for two or three weeks to play with it, uh, we got 45 uh, bug reports, 
25 uh, we fixed, so uh, that was really helpful. I recommend that. Um, yeah, and then this uh, weekend came where we migrated. This was the wiki page uh, normal people got uh, redirected to while uh, a few people still had access. <laughs> um, so, so these are just the first steps. The complete list is on the wiki. But uh, switching Bexilla to read-only uh, was an interesting hack. Um, can, can I interrupt you? Yes, I please interrupt me. So he's a, <laughs> before he was a bug master, now he's a fab master. Uh, can I ask you for some numbers? Because I don't, I don't, I, the, the volume of the whole thing is what counts. I mean, so just uh, how many monthly users we have more or less? Yeah, you, you've got a good point. Um, with with Bugzilla, we uh, had about, we had 20,000 user accounts. Um, we had 75,000 tickets. Uh, we had on average 500 users per month logging in. Uh, I mean, it, it's been running for 10 years. Um, and how many, now, how many bugs created on a daily or weekly basis, more or less? Uh, on a weekly basis, I think in Baxilla it was like 250 would be my guess, roughly. This has increased uh, since, since we're using Fabricator. So, um, all, 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 but all, all this to stress, all this to stress that we are talking about a big machine used by a huge amount of people, very different people, and basically you are telling them, so we're going to change your car. Uh, by the way, we're going to be offline maybe four days, five, I don't know. Uh, it, might even, it might even be that we have to go back because nobody has done this before. Uh, so this, this was the real context that we had. So don't, don't only look at the technical work, uh, look at the social situation um, where you can lose your head easily just for, <laughs> I, I don't know if you have ever attempted to change the home page of your project <laughs> and the discussion is my ring, only the home page. So now saying, you know, I think this is a, an important point that you need to take into account. <coughs> Um, we get more tickets per week now simply because we've invited way more teams, uh, also non-engineering teams uh, into Fabricator. Um, it's not about bugs anymore. It, it's not about bugs, it's tasks <coughs> now. So <coughs> it, it, it's, it's a wider uh, field. And um, so, so we, we've been running Fabricator with, with uh, Bugzilla and our team, well, migrated now for... Uh, after that, for full two full months, and so far the numbers are too early, but 620, 670 uh, active users per month. This January was 670, so so far it's it's increasing compared to uh, Baxilla. That felt like slowly going down because less and less teams accepted it because you couldn't really do project management. Um, yeah, so so all these funny steps uh, work around known bugs, <laughs> um, fetching the tickets uh, from Baxilla. Uh, took like five hours. Uh, creating tasks, uh, comments, attachments in Fabricator took 25 hours. Uh, we, we had a separate uh, database, uh, like not directly. Uh, also, um, creating tasks. Uh, for example, one wonderful, I think, slightly bike shed ticket uh, was uh, as, as we already had tickets in that production instance, we couldn't map like Bugzilla ticket number one will be Fabricator ticket number one. Um, manifest, uh, the, the bug uh, task tool in Fabricator, T1. Um, but uh, so we, we tried to at least have, have it linear, but uh, that wasn't too great for performance, but uh, Chase from operations who wrote that script uh, somehow managed. So um, May I ask you a question? So how many of you are in a project where bug number one is something emotional and significant? <laughs> now raise your hands if you are. Well, we, our bug number one was fix all the docs, so fix the, I don't know, broken documentation, and it's a tracking bug with, and we had really a lot of discussion because we are going to lose our bug number one, uh, but apparently we just got over, but. <coughs> we, we ended up uh, with the rule, uh, Baxilla number plus, plus 2000 uh, is the fabricator number, and uh, we also set up redirects uh, for Baxilla IDs, uh, and, um, of course, that required to change the uh, Baxilla URL from Baxilla Wikimedia Org to old Baxilla Wikimedia Org. And then, uh, yeah, claiming accounts as we asked people to register uh, before we migrate uh, Baxilla. Uh, we had a script for that. Uh, for the most active Baxilla user, this took like about 15 minutes. Um, here, here you see before and after. So this is our Baxilla import script. Um, um, and 
on that side on, on the uh, right, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> you see um, the, the actual accounts after they've, they've been connected to the comments and attachments and everything. Yeah, okay, this is slightly edited here, so it's on the same level. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we, uh, on that weekend we had to test a lot of stuff like access restrictions. Uh, we, we have a common, uh, a custom extension to, uh, f for, for access restrictions to certain tickets that might be security vulnerabilities or so. Uh, that's not an upstream. Um, we also have a custom extension um, for uh, dealing with sprints now. Uh, you have lots of other small bits to do around in, in your environment on wiki templates. Uh, I think I, I edited dozens of, of pages of documentation that link to Baxilla that now need to link to Fabricator. And you run into problems and bugs you never ever expected to happen. Um, <laughs> which can be um, interesting. So we, we didn't think about moving Baxilla like, uh, yeah, we need a new certificate for that subdomain. Well. Um, you had something like private comments in Baxilla, and our script, when uh, um, putting the, the account data uh, together or claiming it again, uh, it overwrote that flag and <laughs> made them visible again, which uh, wasn't too good. Um, well, we, we fixed, I, I really got to say, we, we, uh, we well, mostly Chase and Mukunda uh, as, as developers with the help of Daniel, another developer in the foundation, and also with the help of up, Upstream because um, Evan from Upstream, he was available on a, on a Sunday morning for him to uh, fix our issue with the search indexer performance. Uh, it was an Upstream issue. Um, and yeah, so uh, I, I blocked about details and you add something. So, yes, <coughs> so this was for people we had never met face to face, like, you know, always online. And this was one of those weekends where you end up being really good friends. You know, one of those. <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> and we finally met last week in the same place as four of us. That was nice as well. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's people you, you deal with basically every day. You chat at least for an hour, and it's, yeah. Um, so all in all, it went surprisingly well. I, I was afraid of two things after the Bugzilla migration because that was really the, the biggest tool we had and, and the most popular one when it comes to numbers of, of users and opinions. Um, so I was afraid of two things. Um, one is after migrating Baxilla that everybody will come up with, uh, I have this great idea, can I do this in Fabricator? And the second one was uh, maybe some vocal people somewhere, whatever, staff community, um, that might, there might be some backlash, oh I, didn't li I don't like this, why did you do this or that? And, and the second one, didn't really happen, which made me happy, because then you can still get some sleep at night, and if you only need to deal with the first one. Um, first of all, compared, <laughs> compa okay, compared to Baxilla, we have a unified login. So my naive idea so far is that's maybe also why we have so far a higher number of, of users compared to Baxilla and other stuff. Um, that, that was together with uh, exposing email addresses, the two main complaints I, overheard, I ever overheard uh, when it comes to Baxilla. Uh, when you compare front pages, this is the latest upstream development version of Baxilla. And this is the front page of Fabricator, where you have the tools here on the side. Um, and some feeds over there with, with latest stuff. I, I have notifications up here telling me about, about stuff I'm watching. Um, and if I click here on Manifest, uh, which is where I spend most of the time, um, you, you, you get to uh, the default page will be uh, your queries that you have saved. And I have the, the tickets that are open and assigned to myself on the top. So that's what displayed here. And uh, I basically go there and see in the morning, OK, what to work on. And you can have your saved queries for other stuff as usual. Um, yeah, this looks complicated, but, but the ticket status workflow ha also has gotten easier, I think, because the statuses are really just like the brown, orange ones, and these are more, more like actions uh, nowadays. This, this will go away once we migrate uh, code review too, uh, to Fabricator. We haven't done that yet. But uh, all in all, there's just a status in Fabricator, not a status in resolution anymore. And um, I think we simplified it a bit by, by having these four statuses over there, which are all closed. Uh, and a bit easier than the workflow we had before. 
And maybe the most important thing or, or criticism, uh, there's project management. You, you have work boards, you have columns, you have cards. Uh, they show you the assignee here. They don't. Oh, yeah, they, they do here. OK. Uh, the color refers to the priority, but you, you can backlog, needs discussion, ready to go, needs design, doing this, implement it, needs review, whatever. You can come up with your, your custom uh, for each project with your custom uh, columns. So, for example, when you have a developer summit, like last week, you can have the idea to assign the rooms by using columns, which, who had that idea? It was interesting, I liked it. <laughs> so you can basically uh, plan quite some things. Um, thanks to Wikimedia Germany, we have uh, an extension custom uh, burn-on charts for sprint projects, which many teams wanted. We had a Scrum Box extension before for Baxilla, but that was also like not really maintained. Um, one interesting change I like, but, but it's challenging, is uh, there, there's a flat namespace. So, so you have only projects. You, you can use different colors and different tags for things. Uh, sprints, target milestones, uh, teams, uh, like keywords that, that are cross-project, basically, like accessibility or performance, uh, actual code projects or code repositories, um, but it's a flat namespace. So, so in Baxilla, you had like tags, keywords, status whiteboard, product, component, uh, and all different fields. And um, I, f I prefer it. And here you see also the column that it's in on that workboard. But you have to have some idea at least how to organize that first. <laughs> you shouldn't just start. Um, so where we are right now, um, we're still like, after increasing the acceptance across teams, we're, we're pretty happy, pretty fine so far. But uh, of, of course, there's always teams that have some specific needs still that uh, we haven't covered yet that they yell like, oh yeah, I want to move everything now to Fabricator. So they're a bit reluctant. Um, we have a team practices mailing list to ensure effective and consistent workflows because like, oh, okay, I have this work board now. Which columns should I create and what works for my team? Uh, maintenance, uh, we are pretty selective with local patches because upstream moves so fast uh, that <laughs> it's, Last time we, we pulled a new version from Upstream, we uh, needed a second try because, uh, yes, we, we, we still haven't totally sorted out uh, the testing yet for that. But Upstream doesn't have versions. Yeah, Upstream doesn't have versions, that's true. So you just pull and see what you get. Yeah. <laughs> but normally it's good, so uh, it, it was more on our side the problem. It's, it was on our side. They've got test suites, right? <laughs> well, they, they manage. So just to give you an idea, uh, Within a month, we upgraded a month after, and there were 14 tasks that have been reported by our users that they had fixed. 14 in a month. Now, go back to Bugzilla and your experience, and let me know if there's anything similar to that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, continuing the migration from, from Mingle and Trello. Uh, for Trello, we don't have a script yet. Uh, I think our colleague S will work a bit on that. Uh, for Mingle, some teams have already migrated. There is some script. Um, and migrating the, the code repository we're browsing. Currently, we use uh, Git Blit for that, uh, moving that to Fabricator, and uh, migrating code review and continuous integration. That will, I think, be the fun part. So this is, this is a screenshot from Upstream uh, Fabricator. So um, code review, yeah, you see reviewers. You, you can require lint unit tests, uh, test plan, uh, it's, uh, where's the, is here a link? No, not yet. Uh, to the, well, to the ticket it's here at least. This, this, is, this is the bug report with task number um, and, and to commit as this is merged. And the lower part of this, uh, yeah, this is how it looks like. Well, try it. I mean, it's upstream, so you'll find it. Um, if you're here wondering, like, oh, is this something for our project? Um, do understand uh, the, the, the upstream's understanding of what they do and what they reject. They're very clear on this. <laughs> Want to add something? No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, upstream, they in, in one ticket recently, they, they explicitly said, our API is considered unstable for the next two or three years. So if you do customizations yourself, you have maintenance costs. You need somebody who's willing uh, to maintain your stuff. And they won't announce their API changes either. So you will realize once you pull, but it's better if you realize a bit before. You mean also the public API, the REST API? 
if it has a public or REST API? No, no, it's, it's also unstable. If the REST API is also unstable, um, I would assume so. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I haven't checked that. They don't have an API promise at this point. And they explicit, they're promising you that they will break, basically. <laughs> but it's software. We like it, right? Um, they have a CLA in place, and um, some people uh, might not like that, but I, I'd say, like, read it and decide on your own. Um, know the needs of your projects and developers, because you can't just push something down there if you don't have acceptance. And uh, involve your community and, and the stakeholders, like, like project management, uh, release management, in your discussions. Uh, communicate early, often, wide, and transparent. I sometimes wondered like, if, if we spam people too much when we had two IRC office hours per week where people could ask questions and put these banners up on MediaWiki.org and put this banner on Bugzilla and this mailing list and better also this mailing list. And, um, but I think it worked well. You will never be surprised you do all this and still people come three months later saying you didn't say anything, so. <laughs> it's the internet. You didn't personally ask me for permission to change this website, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Um, you can find a lot of uh, documentation help that we wrote over these months on MediaWiki.org uh, slash wiki slash fabricator. There's subpages like how to get the code, uh, our migration code, it has bugs, uh, but I've, I've written that down now. Um, there's the project management page uh, where we discuss workflows, how to create projects. Um, there's also um, how to set up a test instance, uh, how to pull our changes that we have on our production system. And uh, yeah, if uh, send me an email, or if it scales, we'll see, <laughs> or ask questions now. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll detach this and... Uh, uh, you. Uh, as I understood, uh, the migration script, was it uh, like uh, one big process that takes everything and does a migration in one step? Or is it like an incremental thing? As if you encounter an error, you can relaunch it and it continues where it left off? Um, so so the, the question was uh, how, how the migration script was written, if it was just like in one or if it's in, in certain steps that you could basically restart again. Uh, it, it was both. <laughs> so um, we, we separately pulled like uh, tickets and comments from Baxilla uh, and then separately attachments because we had to work around an upstream bug in the XML RPC API. Um, putting it into the database, then again a very different process like putting that stuff from the database into Fabricator, a totally different script actually. Um, we, we had to restart, uh, realizing after six hours, uh, completely restart, that uh, our attachments were still scrambled because of some uh, encoding issue. That was the upstream bug. We thought we had dealt with it. We hadn't. So at that point, we had to completely restart and lost six hours. But our database engineer somehow made some things faster. So in the end, we were pretty fine. And we had enough buffer. So yes, there was this, this uh, demand for something more incremental, then less disruptive, but really, I mean, you're dealing with 73,000 bucks, is your whole history, and you say, guys, just take a week and enjoy, it's great weather, uh, come back on Monday, uh, you know, that was, that was what we did, definitely. So, one, two. Do you still use Jenkins? We still use Jenkins, yes, that was the question. We, we still have Garrett for code review, and we have Zool and Jenkins still, but uh, we'd like to kill that in the next year. The next year is, we are in, in February already, so it's this year, actually. 12 months, I mean, sorry, <laughs> yeah, 12 months. Talk about any recipes to integrate Fabricator and MediaWiki. Uh, if we did work to integrate MediaWiki and uh, Fabricator, um, not much yet, but but I'm, I'm not I'm not sure. Are, are you after something specific? So so what we had, for example, were on Wiki templates that uh, on on certain Wikipedia's and other uh, sites. Uh, people discuss things. Sometimes these things are bugs and or tasks. Uh, so we have an, a template to link uh, to that task, for example. But what we do not have in place yet, uh, for example, is automatically uh, pulling the, the task status and displaying that uh, in MediaWiki. Uh, we need a bit more setup uh, on labs with some JSON format that was special. 
Um, if you can pull MediaWeek into Fabricator, um, what's the use case? <laughs> no, I wonder if, if you have just something specific. I mean, it seems like the only thing missing from Fabricator is a wiki, right? Uh, it, uh, Fabricator has a wiki. We just disabled it. <laughs> 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 so uh, it has a lot of things integrated, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So b basically, uh, and, and it's an important question, actually. So we decided uh, wikis are good for documentation. Uh, Fabricator is good for project management. Should GNOME move to Fabricator? I'm, I'm not GNOME, that's something a community should discuss. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Would you recommend it? Uh, what I recommend? Um, I, I I involving him or without involving him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I'm also active in GNOME, um, uh, I, I don't know yet. I, I want to run this a, a few more months uh, in, in Wikimedia, um, see how, how things evolve, how, how happy people are, and you need uh, both like yeah manpower to, to maintain these things, uh, that's something to sort out first. There was a question here. Okay, one there. Let us summarize this comment. Um, so yeah, that, that Enlightenment uses Fabricator, and when uh, in code review, when patches are a bit more complicated or longer, or cover uh, more files, that yeah, more, patches more patches together, that it gets complicated, and also with the command line tool Arc, uh, probably Arc, right? Yeah, Arc uh, to use that part. Yeah, um, I'll cut you because we still have some questions. Only 10 minutes left. So uh, we decided to have everybody registered. Uh, I, we have heated discussions, and anyway, we want to give feed. I mean, we, for many reasons, we decided it's registered. You have the policies not to do so, and it might be that you find some surprises because the main use case for Fabricator is also with registered users. But technically, you can. Uh, but, you know. Yeah. There was another question down there, and one. So, so the question is, if, if we're a bit afraid that there's only three people maintaining this upstream. Um, I think the situation is, is a bit different compared compared to Bugzilla. Because, so so I, I've been following upstream Bugzilla for quite a few years. And um, it's, it's mostly, um, there's a few other companies, but it's mostly Mozilla um, working on it. And uh, they have their own special needs, their custom extensions. Some are upstreamed, some are not. Um, but it's it's not the main aspect that, that Mozilla focuses on. Um, and Bugzilla is some, sometimes some people in the Bugzilla community see themselves as a separate entity. While with, with Fabricator, the, um, it, it's a company behind it. Um, they probably want to succeed. Um, so I'm pretty positive that um, they're interested in. Yeah. I mean, I think there's. Uh, I think uh, that's a, uh, another good question. You're going to bet your your house on that. So. Uh, I personally took two factors. One factor is really go to the repository, see the speed of development there. So yeah, Fabricator might die one day, but like I tell you, it's not now. Uh, it's really fast. And also like there's three main maintainers, but there's also a, a, the matter of adoption. They are getting a lot of adoption from different types of projects. You can see how uh, a ring of more experienced contributors are getting more and more involved. And you have people from other companies or other, uh, as of now, it's more about companies. Uh, I think in the open source community, it's not that well known, but I have no doubt that more people will just dive in. 
Uh, and then, well, there's another factor which, which is subjective, is who are these three people? These three people are, five minutes, these three people are uh, former Facebook employees. I guess they had their options when they Facebook goes public. I don't think these guys have, they love what they are doing. They don't have any, any I'm, I'm sure they have, don't have any pressure to pay the rent or something. So, yeah, they, they, they could have stayed in Facebook and have a safe life. They just decided, let's create this company, let's bring Fabricator to everybody. So they really love what they are doing. So. Mm, I think the com I, I I don't know I feel safe at least in, in with, with this option. One more question. Uh, what was the one up, uh, option to choose from, and why did you choose it? Uh, which which other options we had to choose from? Mm -hmm. uh, there were several things. I, I I really recommend the, the uh, review page, but there were several things like uh, I think Radmine was brought up, uh, Falcrum. Uh, oh, I don't remember. Yeah, but 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 we at least had like Track. eight or nine different ones um, that were brought up, and combinations between them, of course. The, the main point was that it was the alternatives are not very exciting. So they solve problems that we had with Bugzilla, but they come with other problems that you quite know. I mean, like Track, for instance. Yes, it's a different type of beast. It gives you integration some point, but we also know that beast. And so there was really nothing. Uh, uh, it's unfair if I say nothing exciting. That's not true, but simply not not the enough exciting to leave the place where we were, and that was really an option where I was like, okay, should we go for this? And there was a sense of excitement of the opportunities that that this type of game would bring. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.